I gather you here because I want to let you know that I have appointed a new boss to help you fight monsters. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduced you to White Ranger, your new boss. No, we don't need a boss. We need a leader. How are you going to get a leader? Hmm, I know. I guess we need to read a book by John Adair titled, not bosses, but leaders. Okay. A book the author, John Adair, is now widely regarded as the world leading authority on leadership and leadership development. The author of 30 books on the subject, he has been named as one of the 40 people worldwide who have contributed most to the development of management, thought, and practice. Educated at St. Paul School London, John Eder has enjoyed a very of colorful career. He served as adjutant in Bedouin Regiment in Arab Legion, worked as a deckhand in Arctic Troller and had a spell as orderly in a hospital operating theater. After Cambridge, he became senior lecturer in military history and leadership training advisor at the Royal Military Academy, Zenhurst. Before becoming the first director of studies at St. George's House in Windsor Castle and then associate director of the Industrial Society, later he became the world's first professor in leadership studies at the University of Surrey. He also helped to found Europe's first center for leadership studies at the University of Exeter. John now acts as a national and international advisor on leadership development. His recent books include How to Find Your Vacation, The Leadership of Jesus, and Effective Strategic Leadership. Now we talk about qualities of leadership. Business doesn't need bosses, it needs leaders. Good leaders have this characteristic. First, integrity. This means that they deserve trust because they tell the truth. Second, enthusiasm. Leaders have it in abundance. Third, one. A leader can be a cold piece and vice versa. Fourth, calm. As the Roman historian teaches to say, reason and calm judgment, the quality especially belonging to a leader. Fifth, calmness and fairness. The leader has both. Next, situational leadership. Everything seems to depend on the situation. In similar situations, very different people might emerge as leaders. Three kinds of authority characterize leaders. First, rank or position. Authority derived from hierarchy such as heredity of monarchy. Second, knowledge. Authority derived from information. Third, personality. Authority derived from individual characteristics. Authority flows from the one who knows. A situation such as war might place a particular premium on the second kind of authority, that of knowledge. Of course, leading, leaders do not lead in a vacuum. They lead a groups, and groups have particular and identifiable needs, specifically the need to get the job done the need to hang together as a team, and the need of each individual member to be treated properly. Functional leadership. There are three ingredients or variables when people are working together. The first, the leader himself or herself. Second is personality and character. The third, the situation in which it's all happening and the group, the follower or subordinate. The next approach to leadership stems from studies on the third ingredient, the group. Working group share certain needs in common. Imagine that each type of need, the need to get the job done, the need to work together as a team and each individual needs. So, there are three main areas of need present in working groups. The first, task. If focus wander from the task, so, that people no longer feel that they need to get the job done. Then nothing remains to hold the individual and the team gears together. They fail apart. The second, team. If the team gears fall away, leaving the task gear and the individual to 
The result is a group of individuals working to do a job, but not working together effectively. The individual will be conflict, will tend in to engage in destructive politics and other forms of intrigue, and are likely to fail to accomplish the task. Last, individual. Remove in the individual needs care and you have a team and a task. But the team exists in name only. People whose individual needs are not being met to need commit themselves fully to the work of the team. They might not quit, but they might simply hold back. Refusing to put forth any effort beyond the absolute minimum required to draw a pie check. Now we talk about styles of leadership. No single leadership style is invariably correct. Good leaders make different kinds of decisions under various circumstances and in a sort of ways. In general, the leader's judgment about how much authority to give people and how much input to invite depends on four factors. The luxury of time. During a crisis, decisive authority may be improved. Maturity of the group. If the group lacks of the necessary knowledge or experience to make a good decision, the leader must take the reins. Organizational culture. In some companies, consensus decision making would seem eccentric. In others, any attempt to exercise authority would smack of dictatorship. Leaders' preference. Some leaders prefer one mode of operating to another, and since the leader is ultimately accountable for the work of the group. The leader's personal preference definitely, legitimately matters. But... Leaders or managers. Leadership is a management and management is a leadership. The product of a leader is the team. The defining marks of leadership are that the leader sets the direction and finds the way. The leader inspires, builds teams, wins acceptance, and leads by example. Manager, in contrast, exercise the function of efficiently allocating resources. Although leadership and management are not identical, neither are they mutually exclusive. Particularly in time of change, managers may feel called upon to become leaders. Leadership functions on many levels. A good leader is effective in three dimensions, as a leader, as a colleague, and as a subordinate. It is also important for the leader to share the same lot as his or her team members. The sense of shared hardship make team members much more willing to follow. Leadership declines the privilege of guests and the comfort of friends. It shares the unpleasantness and drudgery. Precisely because the leader could avoid all of this and choose not to, the leader gains the stature. The leader's generosity inspires and communicates. To conclude that, as a leader, you cannot avoid mistakes. Leadership is learned by experience. It's a practical art. Let your colleague and subordinates teach you. You should not see leadership as difficulties, but on the contrary, you should see them as challenges.
we know how to become a good leader. Now, we want you to become future leaders of Pagan! Three, two, one. Mobile Mepa! Asya! Pagan! Let's go, Brazil!